All right, it's time for another MATLAB demo. We're gonna build off what we did last time, but instead we're gonna use the case where we provide the optimizer our derivatives rather than letting it just find a difference for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy and paste what we did last time just to save some writing, but I'm gonna simplify here. Um, last time I showed you how to do an output function and we don't really need that in this case. So get rid of some lines here. Don't need those output function things. And we're just gonna simplify our function. So uh, I showed you last time about passing in parameters doing this wrapper. Let's call this demo three. And then before we talked about this stuff, we wouldn't have to change, but we do this time because we're gonna have derivatives. But once we do that, we can use it for both the non, uh, the non-derivative and the derivative case without having to make more changes. So <clears throat> I'm also gonna switch to our notation of F, G, and H. Okay, so let's just start with that. Um, the problem I wanna solve, actually I, I started making the video and I made a problem up on the fly and then it was just infeasible. So I'm gonna just grab one from the book that I know is gonna work. This is a function, just a simple 2D thing. Nothing special about it. I just want something that I can do derivatives on the fly here and show you where to put them in. Okay, so um, here it is. I just, I'm gonna copy and paste it to save some time. So that's the function <clears throat> and there are two constraints. So stuff we've already done. Normally, of course, you usually call your own function, but um, I'm just gonna write it in here. Uh, and in this case, there are no equality constraints. All right, so what we wanna do differently now is we're passing the objective inequality and equality constraints, but I also wanna now pass the derivatives. So I wanna pass df dx, dg dx, and dh dx, and I'm just gonna call them df, dg, and dh. So I'm gonna to need to compute those things. <clears throat> so F is a scalar, so DF here, this is gonna be a gradient. This is gonna be, and I'm just gonna do it here in one line. So this is a simple function. Again, normally we'd be calling other things, but I'm just gonna put it all here. The partial of F with respect to X1, that looks like two times X1 minus 0 0.5. And then the other entry is the partial of F with respect to X2, which is just minus one. Okay, so that's it. The gradient, <clears throat> I wanna be a bit careful. I'm gonna give them different variables because we actually have the same number of variables as constraints and that's not common. So I just wanna be careful about the order or explicit about them. So we have two design variables. We have two constraints. I'm just giving them a name and we're gonna initialize our Jacobian. Normally we do it uh, in the order NG and X, right? So the Jacobian, index ij would correspond to dgi dxj. That's fairly typical. So I'm just gonna do it that way too. Uh, it's easier for me to think that way. So dg11 means the derivative of the first constraint, this one, with respect to our first variable x1. So that's gonna be two times x1 minus four. Yep. And then dg12, that's the derivative of the first constraint with respect to the second variable. That looks like just one. Now the derivative of the second constraint with respect to the first variable, that would be uh, one times x1 uh, minus one. And then finally the derivative of the second constraint with respect to the second variable, that's just gonna be two times x2. And I'm actually gonna intentionally just put in a wrong number here, okay? That's it. I haven't really checked what fmancon writes. I'm just writing my own function here. Uh, I have to deal with making this work with fmancon a little bit. And then dh is nothing there, no equality constraints. <clears throat> so no derivatives too. All right, so we've just written a function. We haven't done anything with fmancon. Uh, so let's go look at the docs, see what it says about this. fmancon, I wanna see what the function, how the function needs to change if I wanna supply derivatives. So before, normally we just give f. It says, if you can compute the gradient, then we need to add this option. So I'm gonna copy and paste that. It also says then our function must return the gradient vector as the second output argument. So let me first add the option here. I'm gonna, I'm telling MATLAB that I'm gonna give it a gradient. And this is my function objective here. And instead of returning just f, I also need to return df. And I'll deal with the inside later, just taking note of what I need. Go back here and now look at the constraints. 
strain function. <clears throat> so before we return G and H, inequality, inequality constraints. I now have another option here for specifying constraint gradients. So let's add that one. Okay. And now the constraint function has to return a third and fourth argument, which are those derivatives, right? The Jacobian of G and the Jacobian of H. It could be sparse or dense matrices. Okay, so let's do that. I'll call it G and H, and then now I need DG and DH. Okay, um, let's also dive a little deeper here on the near constraints to figure out the format because I actually don't know which order they should go in. Uh, so let's check that because every optimizer sometimes differs. Okay, including in gradients and constraint function, we see an example, right? Uh, these are the four arguments. And it says the gradient matrix is the Jacobian has the form gradient IJ is DCJ DXI. So that's different from how we normally do it. Uh, notice it says this is the transpose of the form of Jacobian. So for some reason, they don't want the Jacobian, but rather the transpose of the Jacobian. So I guess we could do that here. I'm just going to do it here. I'm going to, I could have derived it that way, but I'm, I'm just going to take the transpose right here. I could do it in many places, but let's do that. So it should be in the format that MATLAB wants. So now I have to deal with these insides here. Remember what we were doing last time. I'm just going to again change to our notation. Instead of C and C equals, we use G and H. What we were doing here was caching these variables so that if um, what often happens is the constraint is called right after the objective at the same point. We don't want to have to call the function twice uh, for variables we already have. So this is just for an efficiency thing here. You don't have to do this, but this is going to reduce your function calls by half. Um, but now we also have to save those derivatives. So I'm going to write that out. <clears throat> and now what my function, this is the function I created on this thing up here, returns six things. So I need to just populate all of those. Uh, and then df last, dg last, dh last. And then uh, f is f last and df is df last. So again, what's happening here is that uh, if these things are equal, meaning I'm just called this the same point that I already did, then skip all of this, don't call the function again, just pass the last values. If they're not equal, then we better update all the values and save them. So for the constraints, we can do the same thing. Just do that exact same check. But now, now use the names, GH. And do the same thing for D. Okay, good. So that's done. Um, and let's run it. Actually, before we run it, I'm gonna go look at one more option. Remember how there are a bunch of options here. There's one other option that's going to be helpful to us. Um, <clears throat> it's this one right here, check gradients. Compare user supplied derivatives to find difference in derivatives. Um, so I'm going to turn that to, it says choices are false, which is the default or true. I want that to be true. I want it to check my gradients. This is not proof per se, but it's a good quick check. We'll catch obvious errors. Because it's going to internally find a difference compared to what I supply and see if there's anything that looks really off. All right, so check gradients failed. <clears throat> it said the objective function derivatives, uh, the maximum difference between the supply derivatives and finite difference was this really small number. So that looks good. But for the constraint, the nonlinear inequality constraints, it said I supplied for element two, two, I supplied this number, which is 15, but it got something like six. So something's wrong there. So I go back to two, two and I check, okay, that's the derivative of my second constraint with respect to the second variable. Oh yeah, that should be two times x2. Okay, so I messed up there. Great, so now we run it again. Great, optimization completed. Check gradient successfully passed. First order optimality measure is less than the tolerance. Maximum constraint violence violation is less than the tolerance. So good, solve the problem. <clears throat> okay, so that's, uh, well, actually a few more things I wanna show you, but that's really it to provide derivatives. One thing I wanna show you is that now we don't have to change this. Let's say I can't provide derivatives. So I just all I have to do is change that to false. Um, you know, I could comment these out or whatever, but I'm just going to run it. It's just going to ignore them is what's going to happen. Uh, 
it ran, and actually, this is a simple problem. It took the same number of iterations, which could take a bit longer, but notice the function call is different. It had to find a difference, so there's a lot more function calls because it's doing its finite differencing. Um, but yeah, it solved the problem, and I don't have to change any of this. So if, the, if you can't provide derivatives, it just ignores, it doesn't use these outputs, it doesn't ask for them, and you could have written it, um, well, I'll just show you. I could just do this, oops. Uh, uh, right, so if I couldn't provide derivatives, I could just give it a bunch of blanks here. And or it's going to do is find a different thing, so it doesn't it doesn't need those arguments. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you. Let me just uncomment that real quick. Let's change that back to true. I guess it doesn't really matter to show you this thing. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the options. Another thing that's very helpful is algorithm. Okay. We're very soon next week, we'll talk about some of these, uh, maybe, yeah, probably the end of the next week. We'll talk about some of these algorithms like SQP methods interior point. This is the default interior point. Um, these last three are all different SQP methods, sequential quadratic programming methods. So let's say active set is another one I commonly use. Um, it's helpful because all it takes is a changing one line, uh, sometimes to try a different one. Uh, so actually in this case, right, this active set worked really well. It only took five iterations and 11 function calls instead of 15 here. So it was a bit faster, got to the same answer. Um, so that's gonna be really problem dependent, but it helps to have options, right? Because sometimes one algorithm may be better suited to your particular problem. Uh, and it's hard to say which one up front. Okay, so that's it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. See you next time.